Hello everyone, this is Miss Amy here to do another fun art project. Today we're going to create this really cute giraffe in warm colors. I love to do animal art and so I thought this giraffe would be a lot of fun. So what we're going to need for this project is a piece of drawing paper. You could use plain white paper if you do not have any drawing paper. Also, you will need a pencil and an eraser, a black Sharpie, or a black marker would work if you did not have a Sharpie, some colored pencils, and a pencil sharpener. As, as you're coloring with colored pencils, you often have to sharpen them. And the specific colors that we'll be using for this project will be red, orange, yellow, and brown, and black. Those will be the colors that we'll be using out of our colored pencils today. So you're welcome to get those out and get those ready, and then set your other colored pencils aside. So there I have it. I have my warm, my red, my orange, my yellow, my brown, and my black. All right, let's get started on this fun giraffe. Very cute giraffe. All right, so we want our paper in portrait direction, which is up and down. And then we want to give ourselves a little guideline to start a giraffe. So we're just going to fold our paper over to the line up the sides right here and you're just gonna gently press on the paper. You're not gonna flatten it to the table because we don't want a super hard crease in our paper. We want just a faint crease that will disappear as we're drawing and coloring on our picture. So I think you can barely, you can kind of see mine just a little bit. I might do it just a little bit more just so you guys can see my crease a little better. There we go, now we can see it just a little better. All right, so now we wanna get our pencils out and we're gonna draw our giraffe. So on our guideline, we're gonna start near the top. We're gonna to give us ourselves some room so we can make sure that we have room for the little, those little horns on the giraffe's head and the ears. So I'm gonna give my paper just a little bit of room there. So I'm gonna come down here and make a little dot, to, that's where I'm going to start. And that should be just about on my guideline. Let me move that over just a little bit. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a shape, kind of a diamond shape, or this two angled lines is what we're going to create, okay? So we're just going to come out here, to draw an angled line towards the edge of our paper, and then down here back to our crease in the center of our paper. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Straight down line, just like that, and then over like that. And if you don't like your line, just go ahead. You can erase it and redo it. Totally fine to do that. All right. So it almost looks like a kite too, kite shape. And we're going to erase that. We're going to make that change that a little bit later and erase some of those lines. So don't worry about those. If there's, if, if they're not quite how you like them, we can fix those later too. And then we're going to, on the bottom of our kite shape here, we're going to draw kind of an oval shape, kind of a fat oval. Okay. Just like that. And now we're going to, that's pretty much the face of our giraffe. And then we're gonna create our neck. So our neck is gonna come out here kind of from the corner, this little corner here. We're just gonna draw a straight line off the edge of our paper, come down here, about right here, and draw another diagonal line straight off the bottom of our paper there. Giraffes have long necks. So this is the basic shape of our giraffe. Now we can add uh, some details and make it um, more look like a giraffe. So we're going to kind of make these, we're going to round this shape a little bit here for the top of the head and so that you can just erase that pointy sharp lines there, that angle, and just make that rounded. And we're going to do the same thing over here. This is where the one eye is going to be. So what I'm going to do is 
when I come down here to the point, I'm just going to make a curved line that comes in a little bit. Okay, so I just came down to that point, curved down just a little bit, curved up. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come down to that point, curve down just a little bit, and then curve up into the thing. And I'm going to erase that because I want to change it just a little bit. There we go. That's better. All right. And then we're going to take that, um, we're going to create our eye here and then we'll draw the rest of our face. So what we're going to do is right under this curved line, we're just going to make uh, another curved line to come up and match that. So it's just like a flat, uh, what I want to say, like a U shape, but it's kind of wide and flat. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. All right. So then we're going to take um, and below the eye. So we're not going to worry about that line there. We can erase that later, but we're going to take our face line now and just make it below our eye a little bit. And we're just going to kind of round it. It's not going to be so straight. So see how I just can't start below the eye and I'm just going to round the shape just a little bit. And then I can erase that triangle line that I created it at the beginning. That just helps us get the shape of our giraffe face. Because um, giraffes can be a little trickier to draw sometimes. So that just helps us. So now for the nose part, I'm going to actually make two ovals close together here near the top of this other oval. That's going to be his nostrils. And I can't erase that triangle inside there. So I'm not going to need that. Now I want to um, start up here near the eye and just come, come down to the oval on either side there. And then I'm going to erase that top of that big oval. There you go. And then I'm going to, I'm going to fine tune this big oval just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the shape of my nostril a little bit on both sides. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom of my oval. So I'm just changing it slightly. Not a lot, just making a more uh, fine-tuned muzzle or nose of my giraffe. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the mouth just by, that's kind of like the top lip, and this becomes the bottom lip. And you can adjust some lines just to how you like it you want to change a line slightly you can do that all right and then I usually add just a couple little lines just to accent the nose a little bit and then on the eye we're going to add a little bit to the eye here we're going to add some eyelashes so what I do for the eyelashes is I just start here at the corner and make some lines pointing out towards the outside of the eye and then connect them together. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I just made some lines pointing toward the outside of the eye. And then I'm going to make an angled line there, at the, kind of like a triangle. almost looks like a triangle. I imagine giraffes have those big, long eyelashes. If yours look a little bit different than mine, that is okay. That's no problem. And then the, their iris, the inside of that, the colored part of the eye is in there. You really don't see very much white of their eye. So that's mostly me colored. And then their pupil is a different shape than ours. The pictures I saw kind of is like a goat, almost kind of like a sideways oval a little bit. Okay. All right. So now we're going to draw the little, uh, the little horns here on the top of the head, add some hair in the ears. So on the side of where I made this curved line here over to the side, I'm going to draw two slightly curved lines that are parallel to each other. That means they go side by side without crossing over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. 
Now I like to make the top little ball there a little look like it's kind of hairy. So I just did like the, I did with the eyelashes. I'm just going to draw some little lines, slightly curved lines to kind of represent hair there. So I'm just going to do that. And then in the middle here, I think he would look cute with a little bit of hair, some little bit of mane there. So I'm just going to draw a curved line down and then I'm going to draw a curved line back up, down, up, down, up. If you have a few more, if you want to add a few more, that's okay. And then I erase everything inside of it. So I decided I'm going to add one of those little hairs here just to give it look like a messy hair day for that giraffe. That looks cute. All right. Now for the ears. So just below the little horn here, we're going to start just below that and we're just going to draw a curved line that goes up towards the corner of our paper. So I'm just going to start here, curve up, curve back out towards the corner, and then a big curved line back to the head. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Do that same curve up towards the corner of the paper, and then curve down back towards the head. And then I'm going to draw a parallel line inside the ear, so it's going to follow that same shape, and then stop. That kind of looks like the inside of the ear. There we go. That looks cute. And then our giraffe has some spots on his neck, so I'm just going to draw a curvy line here. That spot goes off my page, so I only see part of it. Same with this one here. And then I'm going to do one here on the neck. If you want to add a couple more spots, you can even add a couple spots on the, on the face a little bit. You, you can do that if you want. And then the hair on the neck. So the hair, I'm going to do the same way I did that hair, um, except I'm going to curve them a different direction. So I'm going to start here, curve line and a, a point, and then a curve line. And then make them different. I'm, not good. I'm going to make them different lengths, so this line is a little bit longer, and then this one is a little bit longer, and then maybe this one's shorter. And that just represents the hair on the neck. A hair, I imagine, is different sizes and shapes. And there we have a cute giraffe. All right, so um, what we're going to do next is we're going to, now I'm going to actually color this first before I outline my lines in Sharpie because I think it looked better when I, when I'm completely bent, done and then outline all my pencil lines. If you want to outline yours first, that is perfectly fine. You can do that and then you can erase any pencil lines that are left over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my yellow pencil, my lightest colored warm colored pencil first, which is my yellow. And I'm just going to color the whole zebra yellow. Everything is going to be yellow. So I'm just going to go ahead and start and you can color over everything. And when you color with a colored pencil, you want to push down, but not so hard. I don't want a really super hard yellow. I just want a nice, even shade of yellow. So I'm just putting down, I'm just pressing down a little bit, not so light that you can barely see it, but enough that you get a nice color, but not so hard that you are getting a really, really dark yellow. We don't want to do that with that, the colors yet. And then when I'm coloring, I'm doing short little lines that are really close together. So like this across your paper, I'm making sure that a lot my lines are touching each other and really close together. And that way I fill in a lot of my paper without any white showing through. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just color right over the eyes and everything. I know that seems weird now, but we're going to actually layer our colors. So we're just going to layer, put yellow down first because it's our lightest color. 
that's going to be the base color for our giraffe today. We are using warm colors. Warm colors to me are the colors that represent like sun or fire or things that are warm. So I'm so the oranges and the reds and the yellows are warm colors. If you look on a color wheel, the warm colors are often opposite the cool colors. And at our website, rlb.org, I believe under the art tab, you can find some. We have a color wheel that you can actually download and print out if you would like to have a color wheel. And so we're doing our draft today in warm colors. See, now I have to sharpen my pencil. My leads are kind of soft, so they get used up pretty quickly. So I have to sharpen pretty regularly when I'm coloring with these colored pencils. It's always handy to have a little pencil sharpener nearby, just in case you have to sharpen your colored pencils. All right, now I just gotta finish coloring in the whole the rest of the mane and I try to go in the direction that I drew so I'm following the shape of the lines that I already drew there I just think that looks nicer instead of having lines go every other every which way I follow the direction of what I drew except here I'm going to just color over I'm going the direction of my neck I'm not worried about the spots right now because I'll be coloring them a different color later. Right now, I'm just getting in my yellow everywhere. Coloring in that nice, even shade of yellow. And then once we're done with this, you won't need your yellow anymore. You can set it aside. So we'll be using our layering our colors and we won't have any more need for yellow. All right, so I've got that nice yellow all over my entire draft. Now in the, in the screen, it doesn't look quite as nice of yellow as it does in person, but in person, it's a really nice shade of yellow. Kind of looks almost green in my, my video screen. All right, now I'm going to take my medium color, which is my orange, and I'm going to, oh, I forgot. We do need to use yellow one more time. See that spot there, here? I'm gonna actually color that yellow. And this time, instead of pressing like a medium press on my pencil, I'm gonna press hard on my pencil. And the harder I press, see, if I press hard, I get a really nice dark yellow. That's what's gonna make my spot show up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that spot in yellow. I forgot about that. There we go. So now I have this nice, and you can definitely see the difference. And that's the exact same color. I just pressed harder with my colored pencil. And I get a dark, nice darker color. So now I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to go over um, my giraffe. And what I'm going to do is um, start filling in my draft in the places where the draft might be a little darker. See when the light shining on my draft, if I'm imagining maybe my sun up here somewhere, the light's shining this way on my draft. So I might have some darker areas where the draft, the draft's head is creating a shadow on the neck where it's blocking the light. And then my draft will be lighter where the light is hitting it. So my next color I'm going to lay uh, put on my draft is my orange. And I'm just going to start in those areas where I think it needs to be a little darker. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with my yellow. I'm not pressing super hard. Just a nice even color of orange on my giraffe. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over the eye. Just the colored part of the eye and maybe the eyelashes. Those are really nice eyelashes on this draft. I even like them better than my other giraffe's eyelashes. And um, then I'm going to color in 
support here. It's real light. And I'm just going to do a little bit of orange on the nose here. And under this lip, it's a little darker where the top lip is creating a shadow on the bottom lip. And then my nose, fill that in with orange right now. I'm going to layer the colors. So we're going to keep adding colors to that. So there, I've got some orange in here. Just a little bit of orange there. And I can do real light. So I can go super light with my orange and barely get some orange on there just to kind of blend it in with that yellow a little bit. And that's what I'm doing here. Just super light so you can barely see it. But it looks really cool as it's blending with my yellow. All right. So then I'm going to do that over here by the eye. Oh, I forgot to add. I have a, there above the eye, there's usually a little little line there to create kind of a, where the bone of the head is there and I forgot to add that. I just noticed that. So I'm actually going to color that in a little bit with orange because there's a little bit of shadow there with the, the bone is creating. So I'm going to just barely go over this. I'm just barely coloring more orange on that yellow there because I don't want that to be really dark there because the light is hitting it there and so I just want it to have just a little bit of orange color. And then on the little hair here what I'm going to do instead of coloring it in I'm just going to draw orange lines so it looks more like hair. And then on the little horns I'm going to do a little bit at the bottom where it touches where it's connected to the head and then up the side the opposite side of where my son would be and then really lightly where the sun is sitting. And then I'm just gonna kind of scribble in some lines to represent, kind of like I did here, to represent that hair a little bit. Just to give it some texture too, a picture. All right. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this horn, except I'm gonna make sure that my shadow part, my darker part is on the out the side away from where my son would be. So that we don't want to put, we don't want it to be real dark where the sun is shining on it. Sometimes it helps if you draw just a little pencil with a sun here and then it reminds you where your light is coming from. And then it helps you remember to always put your darker colors away on the opposite side of where your sun is shining. All right. And then on the ear, I'm going to do a little bit along the bottom and then along this line because it's the inside of the ear. So I want that to be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to color orange and then I'm going to color very, like I did here, really super light orange. Just really light orange to kind of blend in a little bit with my yellow then darker along that line to represent the inside of the ear, kind of showing a little shadow there inside the ear. And then the same thing on the other side. And maybe a little bit more because it's away from, farther from my son. So it might just have a little more shadow areas on it. And if you don't, that's okay. We're just learning how to do this, so. It's okay if yours looks a little different than mine. There we go. And then I'm going to create an orange spot. So this is where I'm going to color really hard with my orange. See, I'm going to get that nice dark orange in there. So I'm going to color really hard with that. Just like that. All right. And then one more, oh, the neck, oh, and the hair here. So I'm going to do what I did before. I'm just going to draw some orange lines in there, kind of representing the hair. I'm not going to really color that, just add those lines in. There, and then the neck. I'm going to add some orange to my neck because 
where the neck, the head kind of makes a shadow on the neck, I'm going to go ahead and just create that shadow a little bit with the orange. And then come down. I'm doing it a little bit at a time because I want a nice, even color. And then I might come down the front of the neck a little bit where the head might be having a shadow there. There we go. And then the rest of the the rest of the neck there, outside of the spots, I'm just going to barely put some orange. So I'm barely covering that with orange. If you need to practice on a scrap piece of paper, you can practice um, coloring harder and lighter with your colored pencils to get the feel of how that works. It, it takes a little bit of practice to do that. So if you're not comfortable coloring your draft yet, yeah, practice on some paper. That would be helpful. I might just add a little bit more. There we go. All right, so I'm currently done with my orange, so now I'm gonna move on to my red color. Shirt sharpened here. Now we're gonna add even less red than we did orange. So first of all, I wanna do my red spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and just color this spot in red. Now if you wanna do all your spots one color, that's fine. I just wanted to get all three of these colors in, so that's why I chose to do it this way, but this is your giraffe, so you can make choices too how you want to color it in. Okay, so there's my red spot, and then I'm going to color in the nose a little bit because that nose are even going to be darker. Just a little bit under the lip, not the whole lip, because we're even going to do less red than we did orange. Each color is going to be a little bit less than the color before it. Not color in the eye. And probably the eye lashes. And then along this side of the face, the nose, the, the this part of the nose is creating a shadow, so I'm gonna just color lightly with my red and underneath the eye a little bit. Just a little bit there and just a little bit on this side. Not all this much. It's closer to my sun, but just a little bit. And maybe a little bit on the side here. Okay, and then along those little bones on the forehead. You want to create a little bit. And then even the eyelid a little bit, you can create just a little bit of shadow underneath the eyelid if you want. I'm going to add a little bit of red to my, wherever I've added orange. I'm just not going to add as much red. It's going to be a little bit less red. And then the hair, I'm going to add some red lines, but fewer than orange, not as many. And then a little bit of red where I added orange and a horn over here, and then some red lines. That looks really cool. <laughs> I like that. All those little lines, doesn't it look more like soft little hair, tufts of hair up there? That's how, by using different types of lines, we can create different textures in our picture. And that's what we did right there, created some texture there. And then inside the ear, same with this ear. There we go. And then on the hair here, I'm going to add some red lines. Not as many as the orange, though. A little bit fewer. And then on the neck a little bit, I'm going to add color that red, just not as much as I did the orange. Just a little bit less. And it's hard to see because it's a red spot there, but that's okay. We're going to add a little bit more color to that later. So, all right, it's looking good. So now I'm going to put my red aside and I'm going to get my brown out. It's my next darker color. This is where I'm going to add some brown to my nose and keep getting that darker and darker. 
and just a tiny bit under there. Not very much. We're even adding less brown than we are red. So we just want to color those areas. Oh, and the eyes. The eyes are actually going to be brown. So I'm going to make sure I color a nice dark brown color over the eyes. Over all those other colors too. There, that was a cool. And then I'll add some lines to the eyelashes. They look more like hair. Very cool. And then I'm going to add some brown up here to the orange just a little bit. See, I'm doing even less brown than I did red, especially on the side that's away from the sun, just creating a little bit of shadow there and a little bit of brown in the ears, but not very much. See how I'm doing even less brown? A little bit of brown in the hair. There we go. Maybe a little bit over here. Just a tiny bit. And maybe a tiny bit under the eye. All right, and then the last color we want to add is some black. And we don't want to do, we're going to do even less black than we did the brown. So the middle of the eye, that pupil there, you can color that a nice dark black there. And then I'm going to add just a time, I'm going to add just a little bit of black to the nose, maybe around the edges of the nose, just a little bit. Not coloring them solid black. I'm just adding a little bit of dark around the edges and then a little bit lighter in the middle. So I don't want to, a tiny bit of black under the lip. I don't want to totally color in the nose. I want just a little bit showing there. And then just a tiny, tiny light, real light, a little bit of black, just creating that little more depth of shadow there. See, we're creating that by adding layers. We're coloring on top other colors. And then it creates depth and some shadow. It's also called shading or values in our picture. So we have light and dark areas. It'll just make our picture look, or our draft look more real. I'm going to add a little bit of black to the eyelashes so they stand out really nicely. There. And then along the neck, oh, in the, a little bit in the hair. Not very much, just a little bit. And then I create my shadow along the head there, where the head and the neck kind of meet. This is where I'm going to have my darkest shadow. So I'm just going to add, I'm not coloring super dark with my black, just kind of that nice even pressure to get a nice layer there. I'm going to try to make that edge kind of a smooth because the side of the dress face is smooth. And then I might darken that just a little bit there. Now my camera, the camera might be making it look just a little bit funky there, I see. Um, and if you saw it in real life, it looks really cool. It's probably some of that camera, the way the camera's looking at it. So don't worry, just we want to get that little black in there. A little bit more here, probably. Wow, that's looking cute. There you go. We have got a beautiful, oh, one more step. Forgot to outline my lines with a black Sharpie. So I waited till last. The reason I do this last on this picture is because it just hides any, if I were to go over the lines a little bit, it hid any of that. I mean, if you don't want to outline it, you wouldn't have to. It just, I think, just makes it look really sharp. this side. It almost like a cartoon drawing too. You, this is 
a lot of times um, cartoons have that thick black outline and they're colored in Just want to kind of be careful and take your time with this if you wait till the end to fill it in because you won't be able to erase your pencil lines you want to make sure that you're covering your pencil lines really nicely with the sharpie See how much more that just kind of stands out? It makes a huge difference. Make sure I got, oops, forgot to get that line there. There we go. Looks great. Well, there we have it, this beautiful giraffe. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, feel free to send me along a picture, post it on a video, however, email it to me. Um, I love to see what your giraffe, how it turned out. So thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.